uh, my most recent books, uh, it's a set of three books, all of which have got secrets in the title. Um, and the reason for this is that uh, while they're not a trilogy, that i.e. The, the narrative doesn't move one into the other, um, it was a, a, something that the publishers, it was a three book deal that I had had with the publishers. And they wanted to make it clear that, that there was a kind of knitting together in some way. And the knitting together of these three narratives is in the theme rather than um, by way of characters or story. So um, all three books have the word secrets in the title and deal in some way or the other with the idea of secrets from the past coming to haunt and sometimes even destroy the present. So um, it, it, it was, I, at first I thought when I started writing these, the, the, the first of these, the second of these books actually, I thought I'd set myself a rather silly task which was, you know, straight, straight jacketing me a little bit uh, too much. But I discovered that actually secrets is quite a sort of, um, it's a very easy sort of idea to work with because I think a lot of narratives can be spun around the idea of secrets and the kind of the past in people's lives. Um, and how you sort of carry your baggage with you as you move along. So um, it was uh, easier to do than I thought and uh, Secrets and Lies, the first of them was the story of, it's a bunch of schoolgirls uh, of whom one dies on the night of a school leaving party. Um, it was a completely unsolved sort of murder. Um, and that's a, it's a death that sort of haunts these girls for a long time to come. You see them all as grown ups as sort of mid-30s uh, living in you know, different parts of the world, London, Bombay and Delhi. And it, it, it's the story of this, this past of theirs which you, you sort of, you, the, the narrative moves back and forth. But the idea is that they all carry some kind of guilty secret from their school days. The second of the book, Secrets and Lies, is uh, about a couple who had a sort of um, a college romance, um, a one night stand if you like, this is in, in the UK. They go their separate ways both go on to become independently famous. One is a film star and one is a writer. Um, and then when both of them have hit sort of difficult periods in there, they've sort of kept track of each other's lives from afar because they're both quite well known, but have never actually had any direct contact. And when both happen to be going through sort of rocky patches in their lives and careers, they're thrown together again <laughs> in a rather glamorous setting of the Cannes Film Festival. So, uh, you know, they're both jury members. And the rest of the story is about that past of theirs and how that comes to haunt them. And the third is about, that was the most recent book which came out last year or maybe a year and a half ago, is called A Scandalous Secret. And that's the story of a young, a very young woman, a girl of 18 who goes to Oxford to study, um, gets pregnant, um, can't keep the child for various reasons, uh, gives the child up, is persuaded to give the child up for adoption, uh, she sort of, she flounders in the course after that, can't cope with life on, you know, in England, returns to India and, and decides in the wisdom of a 19 year old head to not tell anyone about this. It's a secret that she, she thought she could stamp out and forget forever. Um, but 20, 18 years down the line, that child who's, you know, been fostered and adopted in England, uh, grows up, you know, has a mind of her own and decides to come, she's given at 18 in, in the UK, you're, you're allowed to, get, to ask for quite a lot of information about your biological parents. So she gets an address and fetches up in Delhi in search of her biological mother. So it's, it's again, it's an obvious kind of, um, you know, sort of secret that could destroy the life of this woman who's gone on to become, a, a, you know, one of the sort of pillars of the community and politically and uh, socially in Delhi. Uh, and stands to lose a lot when you know with the with the, with the fetching up of this daughter from her past. So these are the three secrets books, um, and yeah, it, it it was sort of contained in a way by that theme. Uh, I feel having having written three books with secrets at the heart of them that actually I could do a lot more. I could probably write another. What shall we say? Another three books with you know with the same kind of theme. It's 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 actually a very evocative sort of idea. But yeah, I, I'm glad that's done and you know, I can move on to other things now. Where do stories come from? It's a question I get asked a lot. I get emails sometimes about this. Um, and they do. I think, who is it? There's a writer in, uh, who said, writers are like magpies. So they're looking for something shining and something tinselly on the ground and kind of picking away here and there. And that I think is, 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 is yes, they come from all over the place. 
and I've gathered this not just from my own experience, you know, seven novels down the line, but from having conversations with other writers and just reading their interviews sometimes. Um, I remember Vikram Seth saying that the story, the idea for an equal music came from uh, a walk he was having in Kensington Gardens and he says that he saw a young man standing on the banks of the Serpentine, the lake, and looking in and just something, this is the writerly imagination, something told him that the man was depressed, that he'd lost something, something grave. So um, the story just came to him from there and it's actually nothing to do with the man standing by lakeside, it, it's, it's about much more than that. But similarly, I think that this, the scandalous secret, the story about the young woman who gives up a child who then comes back and finds her, I got really from a newspaper story. It was a very tiny story in a British newspaper about a minister called Claire Short who'd given up a child in the 50s, in the very unforgiving 50s when an unmarried woman you know, could never have hoped to bring up a child on her own. And um, that child, that, that boy had grown up into and he'd become an army officer and had managed to track his mother and discovered she was Claire Short and had made contact with her. And that was just one of those very small feel-good stories that sometimes appears in the paper. There was a little photograph of the two of their mother and son. It was a happy reunion, unlike to some extent the story in, in my book. Um, but that was where the, the idea kind of, and I, I don't even think I was looking in particular for a, a sort of story in which a secret would play a large part. This was well before the three, the, 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 the trilogy or the series was, had even been conceived. So, um, but that had obviously lodged itself somewhere in my head and stayed there and then resurfaced at just the right time. So, yes, yeah, stories just come, I think, from all over the place. Um, I certainly don't sit down and do a kind of crafting if, if that's what people expect that writers do. Once you have a story and once the writing process has begun, you know it's going to flow. Sometimes I start a little bit of a, you know, I try to break things down into chapters and see if there's enough of a story there to be able to fill a whole book. Um, but the actual seed of an idea, like J.K. Rowling said, I think about Harry Potter, she was on a train traveling up to Manchester and she said this, this, this face popped into her head of a little boy with a scar across his forehead and the Harry Potter franchise was born. So I don't think she thought about wizards and uh, <laughs> sorcery or anything like that at that point in time, but that's all it takes, I think. Some writers actually develop entire biographies of their characters before they start writing the book, or probably as they've started. Well, I've never actually done that, but I think I do carry biographies of characters in my head. And again, you know, it's, it's, it's quite easily possible to do that. They sort of grow and develop as you go along, and I know that can sound a bit haphazard, and people sometimes want to think of it as a craft that's more um, easily achieved. But I think the best thing to do really when you start writing, and I deliver creative writing lectures to people, so I, you know, this is a very important part of, of, of learning how to tell stories, learning how to create characters, is, is actually wait until the narrative starts to flow. The characters will develop as you go along. Um, I mean, by the, by the end of the book, you know them like you would know your own mother, father, sibling or whatever, because they, they've become that real to you. Hopefully that translates across in the page as well. But in the, right in the beginning, if you have a very strict sense of who's who and if you have a very strong sense of where exactly the story is going to go, I think you could end up with something which feels very constrained, a narrative that doesn't feel natural. So the best thing is to start writing the story, let it flow, and then the characters sort of start popping up from here, and then new characters will emerge as well as you go along, whom you haven't kind of anticipated. But you will find that a character has, say, built up certain traits by page 40 or 50 of your story, then comes to a crossroads um, in, in, in the narrative, and you think, well, you know that by now the characters whatever she might be, say a very honest, steadfast kind of person, she's very unlikely to take this narrative path, she's more likely to take that narrative path and you've got to allow that freedom in, within the narration, freedom for yourself really as a writer, to let it, let it sort of move along. The main thing though is to have your plot you know, sort of character driven rather than the other way around. If, if you sort of constrain your characters within a plot, I think you end up with rather unrealistic and um, incredible kind of characters.